Airline food has been the butt of jokes for a long time. People just don't expect to get on an airline and enjoy the meal they're going to eat. But why does airline food taste so bad? Is it that the airlines are just too cheap to put money into their food? Or is there something else at play? The first airline meals were served on October 11th, 1919. It was aboard a Hanley Page flight from London to Paris featuring a pre-packed lunchbox that cost interested passengers three shillings apiece. Packed lunches, like the original, consisting of sandwiches and fruit, were common for decades following this first course. United Airlines stepped up the in-flight service in 1936 when they installed the first onboard kitchens, making hot meals in the air a possibility. Having a kitchen wasn't possible until this point because engines were much weaker, so much so that diverting power away from them towards an appliance like an oven was somewhat dangerous. Back then, meals were things like egg salad, crab meat cocktails, lobster, and sherbet. It also wasn't uncommon for planes to land where meals could be served at picnic tables. There were other reasons for needing to land, like the need to refuel, but what's the rush? Everyone on board is rich. <laughs> Take your time. With kitchens, airlines could now serve hot and fresh meat that was prepared on board. On top of that, frozen meals, ones that were prepared earlier and then heated up in the sky, also took off and dominated the 40s. By 1958, jet travel had spread throughout the U.S., but only the wealthy could enjoy the luxury offered in the skies. And people certainly paid for that luxury. When adjusted for inflation, a TWA flight in the late 1950s from Boston to L.A. cost $896. A quick Google flight search and I found tickets for that same trip going for under $120 in January of 2019. Just look at how comfortable these people appear in this Pan Am commercial intended to introduce people to the opulence they can expect on board. This is the atmosphere on a jet clipper flight. Delicious food adds to the enjoyment. It's prepared in four simultaneously operating galleys where dishes can be cooked in five minute ovens. During the late 50s, the 60s, and early 70s, passengers could expect to see items like lobster, caviar, ham, Cornish game hens, things along those lines. Sometimes meals were several courses and would last as long as two hours. In 1978, President Jimmy Carter signed the Airline Deregulation Act. The law altered the course of the entire airline industry, pun intended. Before the airline industry was deregulated, the Civil Aeronautics Board told which airlines could fly what routes and even set prices, prices that Congress had deemed to be inflated. With the Airline Deregulation Act, the government abolished the CAB, creating a free and open market for airlines to decide what routes they want to fly and what price they'd like to charge. This gave rise to the low-cost carriers, which are exactly what you think they are, the Southwest of the world. The ramifications of the law is still being felt today as airlines try and keep their overhead down as much as possible. But it seems to work for profit margins. Airlines like Allegiant, Spirit, and Frontier that charge low upfront fares and then hit you with fees are among the top in terms of their operating margins between costs and profits. So is that it? Can we blame the 1978 Airline Deregulation Act and the fact that airlines try to keep their costs down as much as possible for the reason that airplane food is so bad? Well, no, that doesn't tell the whole story. Today, airplanes fly in the sweet spot of 35,000 feet where lower air pressure offers maximum fuel efficiency at a height above most weather events. The air inside the cabin is pressurized to simulate air at six to 8,000 feet in altitude. That's about the same height as Mount Olympus in Washington state. Meanwhile, the air within a plane is at 20% humidity, really dry. In fact, the Sahara Desert hovers around 25% humidity. And there's a simple reason why. Over the course of their trip, planes recycle about 50% of their air. If they didn't, oxygen could become scarce with everyone filling it with carbon dioxide. Air pulled in at, let's say, 35,000 feet is really thin, meaning there's not a lot of moisture. In fact, the air at that altitude can have as little as 1% humidity. 
The plane takes this air in and is able to pressurize it to feel like the air pressure of six to 8,000 feet and then hydrate it to 20%. But as I've said, that's still extremely dry. So what does this have to do with food on planes? The lack of humidity is an issue because it affects your ability to taste. Let's also remember that food can go dry because it's under that same lack of humidity. Your sense of smell works with the moisture in the air, and if that moisture is not there, you won't be able to taste things as well as you can on the ground. Germany's Fraunhofer Institute studied the dulling of our taste buds on planes and found that on planes, your ability to taste is about the same as someone with a cold. Meaning, even if you were eating a meal prepared by the best chef in the world using the best ingredients, you wouldn't be able to taste it. But that's not all. A 2014 study conducted by Charles Spence, a psychologist from Oxford, found that constant loud noises, such as a plane engine, also dulls your sense of taste. Spence is quoted as saying, in order for things to taste the same on the ground as they do in the air, airlines would need to add 30% more sugar or 30% more salt, which sounds awful for your health. <music> airlines are looking into it especially for their first-class passengers, where they're trying to create a luxury experience. Lufthansa reports that cinnamon, ginger, chili, and curry don't need as much help to taste normal. Same with oranges and tomato oils, which probably explains why tomato juice is so popular on planes. So we'll see if airlines can overcome our dull taste buds. Actually, let's be honest. Most of us are not first-class travelers and we're never gonna have to worry about this. We'll just have to stick with our airport diets of fast food and candy. God bless America. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit that little bell so that you get notifications for when Cheddar posts its new content. We have so much fun stuff coming. Please keep watching.